Hello and welcome to the daily newscast within the United Countries special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website firstua.com. I'm Olga Tkachenko and thank you for joining us. Meanwhile, the ATO headquarters report that situation at the front line remains relatively quiet. Within the day, only one shelling at Artemis direction was recorded. The terrorists have opened fire by the small arms in the Ukrainian stronghold near Lozova. Today's morning began without violating the silent regime. Thus, from midnight till 6 a.m., there were attacks upon the ATO units. However, at nearly 1 a.m., on the positions of militants near Gorlovka, our observers recorded a work of enemy anti-aircraft plant. Two soldiers were killed. Another five were wounded in the Donbass region yesterday. It was reported by the presidential administration spokesman on ATO issues, Andriy Lysenko. Two groups of soldiers were blown up on the explosive devices. It happened not far away from Mayorsk rail station near Gorlivka settlement and in the area of Starognatyvka village located in Volnovakha district. The 38th Russian humanitarian convoy has breached the Ukrainian borders. The convoy consists of 100 vans. At the border, cars split into two parts and entered Ukraine through the two border checks, Matveev Kurgan and Donetsk. The Russian emergency situations ministry claims that it is loaded with more than 1,000 tons of food and books. In addition, further humanitarian convoys are being planned now on 24th and 30th of September. According to RIA News, within the period of one year, Russia has already supplied 45 tons of so-called humanitarian aid. Uniform and equipment for Ukrainian soldiers will be produced according to European standards. It was reported by advisor of Ukrainian President Yuri Birukov and head of War Group of Defense Ministry. Moreover, thanks to new materials, uniform for soldiers will cost approximately on 20... 250 hryvnias less. Deputy Minister of Defense Yuri Gusev and head of the tender committee Oleg Svirko underlined that also petrol for Ukrainian army will be bought cheaper. Now we come to the formation of reserves. They are already being formed, and we expect that in 2016 we'll be able to give all our fighters, regardless if they are mobilized conscripts, contract or immediate soldiers, the whole year set. Minimal salary will increase, the public debt will be restructured. The Verkhovna Rada approved the draft laws proposed by the Cabinet of Ministers. The Prime Minister himself and some government officials came to persuade deputies. But the plan on dismissal of the Vice Prime Minister Valery Vashevsky and the Minister of Health Alexander Kvitashvili was implemented only partially. Verkhovna Pirlikuk has seen everything with his own eyes. The deputies start their plenary day with a condemning the intention to hold elections in so-called DNR and LNR. According to the words of spokesmen, the parliament has to admit it because the voting on the occupied territories of Donbass threatened to escalate the military situation there. In half an hour, ministers and prime minister Arseniy Yersenyuk appeared in the government lodge. He said he came because of the draft of the bill on restructuring the day's debt. The Yersenyuk emphasized on the possible outcomes if the bills don't pass. The actual announcement of default and no voting for these laws uh, will mean that Ukrainian citizens won't get the increasing of social benefits, pensions and salaries. The details are specificated by the Minister of Finance. $3.6 billion, which are 20 percent of 18 billion debt, are written off by the creditors. The rest of the debt will be paid back in the period from 2019 till 2027. One of the predecessors of Yeresko, current deputy Viktor Panzanik, spoiled her optimism. He said the debts are written off. However, Ukraine has taken the obligations to pay the, to the borrowers in case of rapid growth of Ukrainian economy. The faster the GDP is growing, the more money we are to pay. The sum is increasing very fast. I don't want to announce the numbers. The only thing I can say, in some cases, the annual sum of payments is higher than the general sum. Despite the critics, the deputies vote in favor. The draft of the bill on the increasing minimum living cost and minimum wage is also on the data today. According to the document, their sum will come to 1,037.80 hryvnias instead of 1,12.18 hryvnias. My dear friends, I congratulate you. This is the victory of Ukraine. There are two officials who wrote letters of resignation. The request of Vice Prime Minister Valery Voshevkivsky is quickly met by the deputies. The speech of the Minister of Health, Alexandri Kvitashvili, brings some liveliness.
It would be great if you could name the surnames of those people who prevented you from purchasing the pills of foreign companies to support our medical mafia. I don't know what to say to you. I simply do not understand the situation. The spokesman Volodymyr Reisman put to the vote the issue of dismissing Kvitashvili. There was lack of votes. The minister who wanted to quit left Strada without being fired. Grigory Perlik, Vadim Tomofeyev, Miroslava Savisko, First Ukraine. One of the important questions which were not discussed in Ukrainian parliament yesterday is the question of blockage of Crimea organized by Crimean Tatar Majlis. And today we are going to talk about this with Deputy Coordinator of NGO Crimea SOS Evgenia Andriuk. Hello, Evgenia. And um, first of all, I would like to discuss with you the purpose of the blockage initiative. What are the main objectives of it? Hello, thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Uh, so mainly the main aims of the blockade of Crimea, which was announced by Mitchlis, by Crimean Tatar uh, main body representative. Uh, so the main idea was to draw the attention to the Crimea issues. So what we see now and what we see now for the last uh, one year and a half and almost two years, they will be on February when Crimea is occupied. So that the issue of Crimea is basically absent both on political discourse of Ukraine and also on the media discourse. So basically there are more and more people here within the politicians but also within the civil society representatives and generally the Ukrainian population who are saying that okay first of all we should do something with Donbass and then on the afterwards maybe sometimes we go back to Crimea and basically more and more with that we recognize that Crimea now is occupied by Russia and Crimea basically is a part of Russia so the main aim first is to draw attention back to the issue of Crimea the second uh, main objective uh, of the blockade is to uh, influence the parliament in order to amend and to change the law on free economic zone. So based on that, there is no taxation to the goods going to Crimea. Yeah, so with that, there is basically the measures that help the business to earn money on Crimea occupation. Yeah? So when the goods are transported from Crimea, uh, from Ukraine mainland back to Crimea without, without any taxation, then there is a way of income for the many companies. Uh, yes, and uh, do you uh, consider the blockage to be the best um, option to, um, to draw an attention to the problem? Or are there any um, other alternatives uh, to, to deal with it? Yeah, I would not say that there is a best option and there is a best solution is a blockade. However, there are a number of factors that went, yes, it was it, within which blockade was driven. So first of all, uh, there have been a lot of time passed after the occupation, yes, so, and it was a time when Mejlis was kind of waiting what the official measures could be done by the government. However, as almost two years have passed, one year and a half, and still there is no single strategy of return on Crimea, there is no strategy from the government, and when we see that there is a favorable conditions for business, which made on this law, so then there is, uh, there is a problem. So that's uh, now the point when more radical measures are needed to be done on Crimea to draw attention to this issue. Yeah? So we as a uh, civil uh, society organization try our best to talk about Crimea, to raise this issue everywhere where we can, but unfortunately we do not see any measures from the government. So that's why I mean, there is a number of factors that was driven to that. So ever as we see there is a problem with the population living in Crimea, there is a huge problem with the, how these measures are presented to population living in Crimea and there is very important factors that should be taken that there should be very good information campaign reaching people living in Crimea in order to show that it's not that we reject them it's not that there are purposes for that and it's not connected that we do not want these people now to be back to Crimea and that's basically the issue with that and also the issue of provision of the basic needs that the basic uh, goods should go to the population of Crimea. So there is the main risks of this blockade. However, we see that Mejlis announced that there is that blockade is only one part of the measures directed to Crimea. There is an action plan and strategy which will be presented by Mejlis, and we think that blockade should be assessed within all these measures together. And uh, do you expect uh, some negative reaction, for example, from international organizations or uh, Western community in the whole? Yeah, as for now, there have still not been uh, any official announcement. And from the point of international law, the first thesis which is made is that as Russia is controlling this territory, there is a responsibility of Russia to provide the population and to provide this territory with the basic goods. So 
I mean, there is in accordance with international law, it's not that we recognize that it's Russian territory, but I mean, there is a basic thesis. However, from the uh, Ukraine, the main demand is that Ukraine should not worsen the situation in Crimea. It should not deprive the population of its basic uh, rights and its basic needs. So as it's not done within the blockade, then still it is in accordance with international law. However, we'll see how it will go, whether the situation will change. As for now, from our perspective, it does not violate international law. And we'll see, as for now, there have been still no declarations by any international organizations. But let's see how the situation develops further. Uh, thank you. And my next question will be um, considering the support. Um, can you tell us an uh, approximate number of uh, people uh, who support such uh, idea? Uh, for example, people uh, with whom you work, actually, the uh, migrants uh, from the Crimea and uh, Donbass territory. Yeah, it's very difficult to assess and very difficult to say the exact numbers because basically there is no inter international or any independent organizations working in Crimea, so it's very difficult to make any ass assessment of the populations living there. However, what we can say from the position of Majlis is that the absolute majority of Crimean Tatars staying in Crimea, they absolutely support these measures, and it was for the long time Crimean Tatars, it was their position, they were saying that we are ready to, to take these measures here, yeah, we are ready to overcome this, to live like even the worst conditions within the aims that Crimea would return to uh, Ukraine one day. So we can say nowadays about Crimean Tatar population and for sure the majority of internally displaced people who have very strong political position, have very much pro-Ukraine position, for sure they would uh, go for blockade in order to, as, as a stricter measures here, in order to return Crimea back to Ukraine. And does uh, your organization support uh, the idea? Does it has an official statement for or against this yeah, decision? We still, mm -hmm. We still do not have like any exact official position because we would like to <coughs> analyze and to give our position after the whole program and the whole action plan of Minchley's is published. So as for now, we do not want to make this, you know, like s small reactions to some small actions. But however, we would like to see the whole picture, the whole holistic picture, and on the Z afterwards to say exactly the, our statement on that. Thank you. And another one question will be uh, for the outcomes. Uh, can you describe us your uh, personal uh, short, long, uh, short term and long term uh, um, outcomes in the perspective uh, uh, consequences of this action? Of uh, the blockade. Of the blockade. Yeah, so we would say that uh, the short term and urgent measures would be forced to change law on free economic zone or better even like to abandon that and uh, to uh, change it within another legislation regulating uh, the, uh, the economic relations with Crimea. So we see it as a short term perspective. The other perspective would be also to um, change the legislation on the entry and exit from Crimea. As you know, there is quite restricted right of uh, citizens, both yes. Ukrainian and foreigners, to travel to Crimea back and forth. There is no transport communication with Crimea. So we think that there would be another change that would be very much um very much favorable in these conditions because we should um, enforce the personal relations between people living in mainland and living in Crimea. So we see that this should be done and this should be improved and there should be no blockade on transport communication and personal ties. Uh, more like on long-term perspective, there would be a strategy on return of Crimea and more direct and more uh, comprehensive measures and position from the government in regard to Crimea. And for sure, and we hope, and it's what we normally say, is that we hope very much that in one or two years Crimea would uh, return it would be once again a part of Ukraine. So uh, do you believe that uh, blockade will help to, to return it? Uh, we yeah. uh, believe that there is probably one of the measures that we should try in order to return Crimea back and to draw attention to this issue. Thank you. Thank you very much for Thank coming much. and having an interesting conversation. Thanks. Today, our guest in the studio was Evgenia Andriuk, Deputy Coordinator of NGO Crimea SOS, and we discussed initiative of Crimean Tatars to cut occupied Crimea from Ukrainian goods supplying. Bicycle is a real alternative to public transport. The initiative to prove it was launched in five Ukrainian cities. The event participants within the European Week on Mobility used their two wheels vehicles to get to work. Now we'll find out how it was. Sergei Lavchenko, a citizen of Kiev, gets to work by bicycle every day and so have been for 40 years. He has four bikes, each for every season. Today he's chosen the one for summer. 
These bikes are made specifically for the city. They can be folded as well. You can go by bus with it. These girls are also on the wheels and wearing short dresses and skirts at the same time. I'm going to work then. It's work day. I shall look like a lady at work. Many men has also stick to a dress code, suit and tie. It's a bit hot, but no matter, it's comfortable. They call it a turbs, but the tie just should be put like this, and off I go. Approximately 200 of cycle lovers had arrived at the Maidan Nezolezhnosti by 8 o'clock. The organizers convinced Bai can easily replace public transport. What is missing are tracks and parking places. There is no infrastructure now, it's a familiar fact, so of course it stops a lot of people. Nevertheless, this appears more and more cyclists in Kiev. We hope it will develop even faster further. There is also such a problem in other cities. There are approximately 4,000 and a half of cyclists in Poltava, and there could be much more there, tells the organizers of the action. Better is if there were comfortable conditions. Many people are refused to use bike just because it's dangerous. Miroslav Stalinkov, a citizen of Poltava, calculated how much time he needs to get to work by different means of transport. It takes 40 minutes by public transport, including waiting for a bus on the way, 14 minutes by car and 20 minutes by bike. By then, bike doesn't require any resources. So when the weather is wonderful as today, it's a pure pleasure. The workers of Kafea, by which owners of bikes usually gather, decided to join the action too. Today, coffee for cyclists here is at half price. Cyclists? Morning coffee? You're welcome. Besides Kiev and Poltava, people get to work by bicycles in three more cities of Ukraine – Karibirik, Kharkiv and Lviv. Ksenia Serda, Volodymyr Nebypyvo, Dmitry Roshanchuk, Konstantin Khudoli, Alexander Pilkun, First Ukraine. The new stadium was opened for pupils in Kyiv. This stadium erected two years. A former student decided to help. Gain gates, sports equipment, special coating, all the children could play football. Our reporter Olena Tsaranka was at this event. In the capital, 254 specialized school was opening stadium. The event began on the football field, the national flag of Ukraine. It's nice that grows a small idea of a big deal, so we had the idea to create a playground and pleased that the patron was a former student of 254 school. This will allow our children to engage in the stadium European level. This stadium, erected two years, a former student decided to help games gates, sports equipment, special coating, all two children could play football. The main thing said Vagan Tomasian need to promote among the pupils a healthy lifestyle. In 2020 we began to build the stadium. For two years we have built. It's nice that the school, it's nice for the children. Anatoly Demyanenko, legendary football player of Dynamo Club, greeted the pupils with the opening of a school stadium and wished them to become well-known players. Of course, we are waiting for that our children would well they have grown a good player, that they played in the team Dynamo Kiev, Ukraine, Sporny, to become like Shevchenko, Rebrov. Seven-year boy also dreamt of becoming a football player. Action unfolds on the field and saw into the sky yellow-blue. I love football. My dream to become a great football player. I like Messi, Ronaldo, Rodriguez. In the final, team district school competed for the Cup Svetoshina. The winners were awarded with diplomas and medals. Olen Sarenko, Uranium of First Ukraine. It was the United Country newscast by First Ukraine. You can find more details at our website, firstua.com. Olga Kachenko was working for you in the studio. We wish you only good news. Take care and goodbye.